That takes us to T accounts. This is just a quick and dirty way to summarize a lot of accounting information into one place. It's not part of the accounting cycle because it's not part of our permanent working papers, but it is something that you'll use a lot throughout the semester to solve lots and lots of different problems. So if you remember from a couple lessons ago, we talked about a general ledger and that's a bunch of columns and it will end up being reams of paper that show what your balance is in each account and where that comes from. We need a quick way to summarize all that information into one place and that's what we do with the T account which is shown at the bottom. It looks like a T, as I said, as accountants, we're not too creative. So a T account is just a giant T with the name of the account on the top. And then we can take all the information from the general ledger and show it in two columns instead of a bunch of columns. So the debits go on the left. Don't have to label, label them because you should know by now that that's where they go. Credits go on the right and you can easily add up the debits, subtract the credits, and see that we have a $93,600 balance in the cash account. We can use this to solve many, many problems. Here's some examples to show how to use the T accounts. If you remember from the adjusting journal entries, it, you often had the problem where it told you you purchased 30,000 in office supplies and you have 8,000 left at the end of the year. We're not going to watch every time somebody takes a pen out of the supply cabinet, but at the end of the year we are going to see what's left and then we have to back into what was used. So a T account, by looking at that, you can see the only number that's going to work here is 22,000. So 30 minus 22 gives you the eight. You must have used $22,000 worth of supplies. If you think about it, this is really just an easy way to do algebra, but in the more complicated problems, the T accounts really work a lot easier than just straight algebra. Another example is you might want to find dividends. If I look at retained earnings, we know the only thing that increases retained earnings is net income, and the thing that decreases it is dividends. So we see 500 plus 90 is 551. The first thing you should notice right off the bat is that thing doesn't balance. So one nice thing about the T account is you see if things are in balance or not. We know then that something has to go on that debit side. And so when I first did this, I came up with $46,000 as the number for dividends. Just looking at it, you should be able to see that zero minus one can't be six. So you're pretty sure that this is not right. And the second thing is I always like to double check after I solve one of these to make sure it works. So this time using my calculator, I typed in 500 plus 90 minus 46 to get 544. So I know I screwed up. So I took my calculator again and this time it was nicer to me and it showed me that 39,000 is the number that fits there. 500 plus 90 minus 39 does equal 551. So that's the right number. So the T account also helps you catch a lot of errors as you're going along. Let's practice, practice, practice.